Hi, I'm Dr. Grace Smith and I'm a senior lecturer in sports biomechanics within the Department of Sport and Exercise Sciences at the University. Thank you for joining me in this quick practical demonstration today. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview of one of our computer software systems that we use within the sports biomechanics, particularly with first years and second years, in order to analyse sporting performance. So I'm going to be giving you a demonstration of a software known as Quintic. Now Quintic is an analysis software package that we use to analyse two dimensional videos of sporting performance. So the examples the videos used today will be videos that have been collected by second year students in a research project that they did last summer. So this was um, as part of of a sport and exercise sciences module, module SS5060, which is experiential based learning within um, sport and exercise sciences, so within the department. So in the videos, you're going to see some examples of our facilities, as well as an um, example of how we would analyse an athlete's performance using the software. And like I said, uh, this is typical of what we would do in our practical sessions with first year and second year students um, as part of the sport and exercise sciences course at the University of Chester. So today we're going to look at some of the key biomechanical determinants of sprinting performance. So by that we're going to be looking at the kinematics involved during sprinting. So by kinematics we are describing the human in motion. So we're looking at movement patterns involved, trying to break down the technique into key determinants of performance. Kinematics is investigating how far, how fast and how consistently an athlete moves. So by calculating variables such as joint angles, speed, velocity, we can describe the athlete's body in motion and we can uh, make inferences to how the athlete might improve their performance. So I'm going to start off with showing you a, a panning video just so you can see the setup of the research project that I'm going to show you today. OK, so what you can see on the screen um, is just an example of our setup at the University of Chester. So we've got a, a 60 metre three lane athletics track next to um, some football pitches, so 3D um, and astro pitches um, and beyond that tennis courts. And for this research project, the students actually have three different uh, video cameras set up. So the first video cameras, which you'll see footage from now, is a panning camera. So as we play the video through, it will go quite slowly to begin with, we can watch the athlete as they perform a 20 metre sprint. So we can see the university buildings in the background and we can see st two students at the side of the athletics track filming from both the left and the right hand side with high speed video cameras. So these are second year students uh, from the Department of Sport and Exercise Sciences undergoing a research project that they did last summer. So the aim of the research project was to quantify any asymmetry between the left hand side and the right hand side of the body. So that was the, the research project and to do that they filmed uh, a group of athletes performing 20 metre maximal sprints uh, using three different cameras, a panning camera, to gather the whole of the sprint and then two fixed cameras either side of the athletics track to gather footage from the left hand side of the body and the right hand side of the body. So if I open up one of the high speed video cameras uh, footage now we'll start off with looking at the left hand side of the body. OK, if I fast forward the video um, so we can see uh, the athletes when they're in the middle of the field of view. Um, so we can slow this down and we can look at the athlete's stride patterns, for example. So we can make 
general observations are upon their technique or their body position. And if we wanted to, we could do some qualitative comparisons to another athlete. So in this system in Quintic, it allows us to look at multiple athletes, multiple sprint trials at the same time. So at the moment, I've just got one video open, but if I want to open a second video, I can have two videos open side by side. And in the second video, I can open up perhaps a second athlete. So let's uh, do a very quick comparison to a second athlete. OK, now let's say I want to just make some general um, observations upon their running technique and we'll look at breaking it down into the gait cycle. So we'll look at the instant of foot contact. So we need to just get both athletes to the, the same point in the gait cycle. So we'll fast forward to touchdown with the left leg. So both athletes now um, are at the point during the gait cycle of left foot touchdown. Um, so we can see that they've got quite different body positions. And perhaps if we wanted to quantify these or measure these, we might uh, use some of the tools within the software, such as measuring an angle, for example, or measuring a height or a distance. So if I just quickly show you the angle option, I can go into angle and basically measure any angle uh, within the body. So let's say I was interested in trunk lean. So I can draw an angle of the trunk to the vertical and then do the same in the second athlete. OK, and we can get an estimation of the amount of forward trunk lean. So we could do this with any part of the body. We could look at knee angle, for example, if we were interested in knee angle. Right, and we can make some general observations uh, about their body position during the whole of their stride or the gait cycle. OK, now, um, if we were doing this for a research or a research project, we want to be a little bit more accurate than some of these crude estimates of angles. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to talk you through the digitization process. So this would be how, an athlete, how a student sorry, would go about analysing this footage in order to generate some biomechanical data. OK, so I'm starting off with a raw video file. OK, um, again, I will just uh, fast forward again. This is just one video from the left hand side of the body. Now, in order to quantify the athlete's speed and the athlete's step characteristics, for example, we could look at their step rate, their step length. Um, then we can do what is known as a full body analysis or a full body digitization. Now, I'm just going to quickly give an example of that process and look at some of the results. So the first thing that we would need to do is to calibrate the video. Um, so this is the way that we can work out known distances by using a reference, an external reference frame for a known vertical or horizontal difference distance. So we need to um, calibrate this video. Go to load calibration file, then luckily for me, this video has already been calibrated, so we do not have to recalibrate it. OK, so in order to um, analyse the athletes throughout the whole of the um, video that we can see on the screen, we need to digitise. Now, we can do that using markers on the athlete, or we can do this manually by selecting anatomical landmarks and following those landmarks throughout the video. So just a quick example, I'll show you manual digitisation. So we're going to manually locate and digitise points on the athlete's body in order to generate some angles. So we'll use a full body digitization analysis. So 18 points in order to calculate the center of mass. So now the video tells us that we are ready for digitization. Please scroll along the video to the first required frame. So I need to get um, the video to the correct frame that I want to start my analysis um, because it's just an example. We'll start here. 
And then we need to digitize the 18 points of the body um, throughout um, the video clip. So starting off with the top of the head, we need to pinpoint and locate where we believe the top of the head is and click. Then we move on to the neck, the left shoulder, the left hip, the right hip, which isn't in view, so it's going to have to be an estimate. Uh, the right shoulder, same again. Left elbow, that's more clear. Left wrist, left hand, right elbow, right wrist, right hand, and so on throughout the 18 points of the body. And we would have to do this every single frame, so frame by frame throughout the video. So I'm just going to quickly show you an example one that has already been done. So this one says it has an associated digitization trace, so it has already been analysed by a student. OK, so now we can see the traces of the digitization. So these are the anatomical landmarks that have been located on the athletes as they perform the sprints. Um, and now from this, we can start to generate some kinematic results. So if we show you some uh, linear kinematic results to start off with. OK, so in this um, analysis screen, uh, we can select what part of the body we're interested in. Now, often within biomechanics, if we're trying to quantify the performance of the whole of the body, we would use the centre of mass. So I'm just going to select the centre of mass. And we can see on the um, screen we have got um, the athlete's centre of mass, um, their distance, their velocity and the acceleration, which is shown by the red line on the graphs. OK, and we can analyse this, we can export uh, the results into an Excel file or we can play the video through um, and look at the distance of velocity or the acceleration of the centre of mass. So, for example, um, in this video, we've got three different points of the gait cycle annotated right touchdown, right lift off and left touchdown. So from the velocity graph, we can see that the athlete's centre of mass velocity was the highest around right lift off and their velocity was around 10.7 metres per second. Now we can also do the same kind of thing for angular analysis as well. So we can uh, choose a certain angle of the body that we'd like to look at. So I'm just going to quickly do a knee angle. So a knee angle, we would need to pick three points of the body. We would pick, we'll do the left hand side. So we'll go left hip, left knee, left ankle. Okay, and on the screen we can see uh, the athlete's knee angle. OK, so um, at the top, we've got the angle itself, the angle of displacement. We've got the angle of velocity and the angle of acceleration. OK, so again, we can look at the position of the knee. So, for example, um, just after right touchdown. At around frame 110, so I'm just going to scroll the video back to frame 110. OK, so we can see at this particular frame, frame 110, OK, uh, the athlete's left knee is considerably flexed, OK, and that is highlighted uh, within the graph now, OK, and if we hover over that point, it will give us a rough estimate of value of knee angle, so a knee angle of around 53 degrees, so the angle of the knee at that point is around 53 degrees, um, and we can create lots of different angles, um, throughout the body and save the results into an Excel spreadsheet. So just to give you an idea of what a student would actually do with this, um, they would um, actually write this up into um, a project. Um, so for this particular module, the assessment was a poster presentation and I can 
just quickly show you an example poster from a student. Um, so they have um, written this up into a brief scientific report comprising of introduction, methods, results and discussion. And they have shown um, some significant differences between the left and the right leg during sprinting. And how does this relate to the research? So if we wanted to compare it perhaps to um, a research paper, here, here is an example research paper which has looked at kinematic stride. Cycle asymmetry is not associated with sprint performance and injury prevalence in athletic sprinters. So this um, is telling us within um, just one example of a research paper that any asymmetry that is found between the left hand side of the body and the right hand side of the body in terms of the kinematic variables I've talked about today. So things like step length, step rate, velocity and angles of the body as well. Now these um, in this research, in this research um, article has been shown not to be associated with um, injury prevalence or sprinting performance. OK, so hopefully uh, you enjoyed a very quick overview of um, some of our software, Quintic software that we use with second years and first years in particular for their practical sessions. And also a very quick um, overview of some of the type of work that students will be doing um, within their practical sessions. Thanks for listening. And um, if you have any questions during open day, feel free to come on to the, the live chat and we'll be here to answer your questions.